Hello students, welcome to this uh, uh, module uh, which is part 10 of our modules on uh, linear algebra. In the last couple of modules we discussed uh, how to diagonalize a matrix and we are going to um, continue with uh, one last application of uh, diagonalization um, and that relates to how, uh, sorry about this typo, how we uh, understand or how to maximize, minimize functions of many variables, not just one or two variables, but many variables. Okay. So, in order to uh, proceed to that uh, idea and that uh, result, we first understand, uh, we must first understand what a quadratic form is. A quadratic form Q is a scalar that is obtained, uh, it's a scalar function of uh, a real vector x. Okay, So, you have a vector x in an n-dimensional space which has components x1 to xn and the quadratic form Q is a scalar. Okay, It's a number that is obtained out of this vector. So, it's a scalar function of this uh, real vector x. How does this look? This looks like x times ax. Okay where A is some real linear operator. Okay. So, in a given basis therefore, in a given basis therefore, Q becomes Q which is a scalar function of X right becomes X transpose A X. Okay. This is in a given basis where A is a real matrix. Now, whenever we deal with uh, quadratic forms, it is sufficient. Okay, let's um, consider the matrix operator to be M uh, to begin with. Okay, so this is the linear operator M, and this becomes a real matrix M in uh, a given basis, right? Now, whenever uh, we worry about or uh, we consider quadratic forms, it is sufficient to consider only uh, uh, re, uh, symmetric uh, matrices. The reason is the following. Any matrix M can be written as a uh, sum of uh, this is uh, the real matrix or real operator M can be sum of uh, written as a sum of a symmetric matrix and an anti-symmetric matrix. That's very simple uh, because you know that A is uh, M plus M transpose by 2 and B is M minus M transpose upon 2. If I add these two, I will get uh, back M. So, M is A plus B. Okay. So, if I consider Q is X transpose M X and I write M as A plus B, then uh, I will write this as X transpose A X plus X transpose B X. Okay. Now, Q is a scalar. So, Q must be equal to Q transpose because Q is just a number. Therefore, Q transpose, if I write Q transpose, I have to use the notion of what the transpose is. So, I have to do this the whole transpose X transpose a x whole transpose plus x transpose b x whole transpose right now this becomes x a transpose x plus x right I am sorry I uh, have to be a little bit more careful so, uh, this is X transpose, A transpose X. See, uh, A, B, C, the whole transpose is C transpose, B transpose, A transpose, right? So, it's the same idea that uh, uh, we are using. So, this X transpose comes here, A transpose, and then X transpose, the whole transpose is X. Similarly, X transpose, B transpose X. Okay. Now, this becomes, but A transpose is A because A is the symmetric part of the matrix M, but B transpose is 
minus b so q transposes this but q is originally x transpose a x plus x transpose b x if q is equal to q transpose that means that this contribution th these two are identical that means that this has to be equal to this and this has to be equal to the minus of this or x transpose b x is always zero okay if b is anti symmetric then this part doesn't contribute so it doesn't matter whether your matrix is um, symmetric or not symmetric uh, a quadratic form you will have only the symmetric part to contribute so q can be written as x transpose a x where a is symmetric so example uh, if it's you consider a three dimensional space this is x transpose let's say a is 1 1 3 1 1 -3 3 -3 -3 -3 operating on x1 x2 x3 again if you do the multiplication you'll get x1 squared plus x2 squared minus 3x3 3 squared plus 2x1 x2 plus 6x1 x3 minus 6x2 x1 so this is the uh, nature of the quadratic form you have squares and then mixed terms in the quadratic form that that is based on the elements okay uh, elements of the vector so let's consider only symmetric parts okay now suppose so q is so we'll consider only symmetric uh, x a x which is nothing but x transpose a x now let's transform the basis okay such that x is given by s times x bar sorry x dash right or x dash is equal to s inverse x okay and let's the transformation be orthogonal that is s inverse is s transpose this is an orthogonal transformation that means that x prime is s transpose dot x okay so q becomes instead of x uh, I'll write s x prime oops I'm sorry about this whole transpose dot a instead of s I will write x s prime as such now I'll take the transpose this becomes x prime the whole transpose dot s transpose dot a dot s s x prime this is nothing but sorry q is x prime the whole transpose okay this is s transpose a s dot x prime now this combination will become just the transformed matrix a prime right because you know that if you transform a matrix uh, by change of basis the transform matrix is given by s transpose okay so this is the quadratic form this is a scalar it is independent of the basis so this is the same as uh, the original x dot a uh, x transpose dot a dot x which is the same as x prime transpose dot a prime dot uh, x prime okay now comes the interesting part this is general if we choose the transformation matrix such that it contains the column vectors of the eigenvectors of a as column vectors um, uh, okay let's uh, let's call the eigenvectors of a as a e i is lambda i e i these are the eigenvectors if s is comprised of e1 e2 so on up to e n these are the eigenvectors then we know what happens to this uh, transformation then a prime will become then a prime will become purely diagonal and zero elsewhere right so if that is the case then q becomes x prime times a prime dot 
x x prime transpose dot a prime dot x prime that is nothing but what is x prime transpose it is x1 prime x2 prime xn prime a prime is lambda 1 0 0 0 0 sorry this is lambda 1 lambda 2 0 and then z, I mean, lambdas in the diagonal and zeros in every other times x1 prime x2 prime xn prime okay if I multiply this I'll simply get lambda 1 x1 prime squared plus lambda 2 x2 prime squared plus so on up to plus lambda n xn prime squared so this becomes a perfect uh, you know addition of squares there is no cross term no cross term like x1 prime x2 prime this is not that because we have switched to the eigenbasis where the matrix a prime is purely diagonal now this comes very very useful when we consider the uh, extrema of functions of many variables n variables how suppose I have a function of n variables f of x1 x2 so on up to xn okay now for stationary point we know that partial f partial xi must be 0 i going from 1 to n it's a function of n variables so there are in order to find the stationary point you have to f uh, first set the first derivative of the function with respect to all the variables to 0 okay now once you find the stationary point what is the nature of the stationary point is it maximum minimum or sal saddle so in order to do that you have to find let the stationary point be denoted as x sub 0 the vector f of x minus f of 0 we look at small deviations and the first order derivatives are 0 if you do a Taylor expansion you will get only the the first non-trivial term will be the second order derivative evaluated at 0 this is a stationary point times delta x i delta x j okay uh, where i and j go from 1 to n okay so let's call this matrix m okay with elements m i j partial squared f by partial x i partial x j evaluated at uh, the uh, stationary uh, given stationary point this is called a hessian matrix this is called a hessian matrix in uh, linear algebra so delta f is to first uh, to the first non trivial order is half delta x transpose dot m dot delta x this is basically the same what i'm writing uh, writing here with this identification as this matrix m okay now m is real and symmetric because we are considering functions of real variables and because of the equality of mixed partial derivatives uh, we know that m is real and it has to be symmetric so m has uh, real eigenvalues it's a symmetric matrix and orthogonal eigenvectors right so let's call that eigenvalue problem as m e i as lambda i e i okay this is the eigenvalue problem for m that will satisfy this now I am going to expand my uh, deviations from the uh, stationary points delta x in terms of the eigenbasis of the eigen uh, vectors e i of the matrix m hessian matrix so delta x is written as a i e i so delta f which was originally half delta x transpose dot m dot delta x will become now okay now I'm going to substitute delta x as uh, a i e i so this is half delta x transpose summation a i m e i but m e i is nothing but lambda i e i so this is nothing but half delta x transpose summation a i lambda i e i okay but this is but I'm going to now do the next substitution in for delta x transpose this is summation over j a j e j transpose summation over i a i lambda i e i okay so this is nothing but half 
I'll take both the summations J I A I A J lambda I times E J transpose E I. Now the eigenvectors are orthogonal or even orthonormal so I can write this as delta I J. This is the inner product of the two eigenvectors J and I. Only if I equal to J they are non-zero. So this will become half now this delta i j will kill one of the summations this will give them so i a i i becomes j because of the delta i j and uh, lambda i so what is this this is delta f now it's now very easy to find whether now we are in a stationary point whether it's a maximum or minimum or a saddle depends on only this whether delta f is greater than 0 for minimum we are in the bottom of a well so delta f has to be greater than 0 that means that regardless of this is a sum of positive real quantities a square of uh, sum of positive squares so these are positive so in order for minimum right if even if at least one of the lambda i's are negative that means that it is possible for this to be uh, negative right delta f can be negative so you need all the eigenvalues to be positive. For maximum, regardless of a i squared, you must have delta f to be negative. So all the eigenvalues should be negative. And uh, if you have mixed eigenvalues, that is some eigenvalues are positive and some eigenvalues or negative then you get a saddle point okay this is how uh, one therefore finds the uh, condition criteria for maximum or minimum or saddle point for a function of n variables all you have to do is you take this uh, hessian matrix you find its eigenvalues so this is an all important matrix the eigenvalues of this matrix determine maximum minimum or saddle okay um, so this is a short module because I just wanted to illustrate uh, the notion of uh, uh, quadratic forms and how to connect uh, the notion of maximum minima function of many variables to eigenvalues of the Hessian matrix uh, I'll stop here in the next module I will summarize uh, whatever we have done in terms of uh, uh, eigenvalue problem and uh, diagonalization and so on uh, and then I will uh, give a final big picture of all the properties of various types of matrices. Okay, uh, Thank you. We will continue in the next module.